Is your laser work mired down by trying to get the settings for all of your materials just right? If that's the case, then this is the video for you. So stick around. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome back to the shop. As you know, I've had a Muse 3D laser delivered to my workshop recently. And while I've been working on a few projects, I've struggled with some getting the settings just right on some of my materials. This is especially true for vector shapes where uh, the color depth is essentially up to me and I really don't give the laser any hints or the laser software uh, as to what the shade of, of color gray should be. So what I decided to do is start making some, some gauges for determining individual grayscale settings for uh, each of my materials that I use commonly. And what I did was I created this, this set of, of materials. And as you can see, for each of them, there's, there's a set of, of grayscale and you can see the shapes. And so as part of that, what I also did was um, modify the material settings in my laser. So I, I now have a long list of materials and I can walk you through uh, how some of that works. So, with that, let's get going and I'll show you how I did some of these. So the first thing to jump into is Inkscape where I'll show you the material board that I created. And certainly you can write down the name of the material if it isn't obvious. For things like cardboard, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, certain kinds of wood or different kinds of plastics, acrylics will not be obvious. So you might wanna write the name down here. The other, three parameters that my laser will allow me to set for, for any uh, vector color is power, speed, and current. And what I did was create some slots here where I could write these down with a marker or a pen on pretty much any material that I'm going to print. And within the, within the middle part of this shape, uh, I created small boxes for each power from 10% or each shade, I'll say is better, from 10% up uh, right, uh, left to right and then right to left up to 95%. And, and then once I load this into my laser, I can use the vector uh, setting information and I can select each one of these and set a specific setting for power, speed and current for each of these boxes. And what I'll end up with out of that is, is a nice gradient scale from, from 10% or what I believe is 10% up to what I'm happy with at 95%. And the reason I word it that way is because this isn't necessarily something where you can set obvious values here from say, you know, 10% here, a 10% gray is, or shade is 10% power and 15% power for this and so on. It's not that obvious usually. So I'll walk you through what happens there. Now what I will tell you is for the most part, I try and minimize the variables here. So I tend to print things at 100% for a couple of reasons. One is it's one less thing to worry about, but it's also, uh, uh, there's no reason I ever wanna slow my, my laser cuts down. So. Uh, I try to leave this at 100% wherever possible and, and I vary power and current. Now within each color set, I tend to pick a current that works for that range and I leave it for all, for every shade. Uh, and it's actually power I vary from for each of these. So, uh, and I'll walk you through how I did that for some of the materials that I use. So with that, we can, we can just jump to uh, my laser software and we can load one of these in and I'll show you what I did. So here I am in Retina Engrave 3, which is the laser control software for my Muse 3D. But if you have a different laser, you'll have something similar and you can do the same thing. But if you do own a Muse, I did make this job easy because what I did was I created a, a whole project that kind of presets a lot of these things for you. And I actually have a couple of other uh, shapes here that I'll, I'll remove because we won't need them for this. So what it loaded was my material settings board, which is the uh, part that I showed you in Inkscape. And everything is kind of pre-configured here. So 
Uh, and I took the liberty of labeling elements instead of just saying element zero, it now has what it actually is. So you can see there's the outline and if you wanted to see what 55 looked like, it would be, or 50, it would be selected there. And for each of these, you'll notice there's a color uh, assigned already. And what these colors coincide with in, in the Muse is, if I pick one of these, you'll see that they, they line up with these colors from sort of left to right here up to 50 and, and then, uh, you know, just keep going from uh, 55. Anyway, you'll get the idea. It doesn't, they're just the settings that I picked here. So you can arbitrarily choose different colors if you want. It doesn't really matter, but this made it easy. So for any one of these, you'll see I've already kind of preset these with an arbitrary setting. And I don't remember, this could be for cardboard, I believe. But so what I have is I mentioned in in when we looked at it, this in Inkscape, that all the settings are, are fixed at 100% for speed and its power we actually vary. So in this case, the black objects, which is the 10%, has a 16% power and, and a 21% current. And in fact, all the parts or all of the boxes are 21% current and it's the power we're varying here. The last two objects here are for the text, uh, which again, you can, you can tweak if you want. So you'll see if I pick it, it says it's filled in text and, and it uses, uh, what I generally chose here was the 50% values. So anytime you're, you're setting one of these, you can pick whatever you used for 50% down here. Just, you can pick something else if you want, but I typically use 50%. And then the outline is the bottom one, which is that kind of orangey color, hopefully you're not colorblind, where the speed is 100%. And uh, I picked some value that will cut that material. And for these, you'll have to kind of experiment a bit to get uh, the minimum values that you can use to get a nice clean cut. Don't just arbitrarily go 100% across the board because depending on your material, you may burn it or score it in some way or smoke, put a lot of smoke onto the surface. So anyway, what, so for each of these I have, I've picked each element and I've said fill it, don't draw an outline. And that's kind of particular because when you draw an outline on something, especially for something like the 95% value, what it actually does is draws the fill first and then draws the outline over top of it. So in effect, you get kind of double hit on the, on the perimeter. And if you're at 90%, depending on the material, that could be enough to just cut that piece right out of your, right out of your material. So um, you really want to avoid outlines on all of these. And you'll see if you look in this project that all of these are, the outlines have been turned off. And so once we were kind of happy with our settings, uh, we could just go ahead and fire this to the laser. But what I'll point out is, well, there's two things I'll point out. You'll notice the first thing we draw is the text. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, originally what I had was the text. I drew the 10% and the 95% and then the text. But what I noticed with the 10% one, if I did this, was that it was always darker than it should be. It was more like a 35 or 40%, so it would be dark, and then this one would be light and progressively up, uh, up in value. So there's something, it must be a bug in the, in the software, so Fusion, if you're listening, go fix it. Uh, so what I did arbitrarily is I print the text first. Um, but if you're just kind of experimenting, what I normally would do is drag this down here and print the just these two and then stop the job as as i'm as i'm cutting it and what that allows me to do is see what the two extremes are and from that i can determine i can make a, a good attempt at getting these values proper so with that we can we can just get going uh, by shooting this to the laser so now that we have our our piece cut 
uh, one of the things you can do is, or we should do, is store those values so that you never have to guess again. Uh, and if I kind of bring this up again, and maybe we can do a little bit of a close up here if I can get it into focus. Um, you can see it starts at 10% and slowly, slowly or gradually goes up to, to 95. And it gets progressively darker and it doesn't look too bad. And uh, so, but I never want to have to remember that again. So one of the things you can do is you can change the material settings. You can create new material settings in your laser software. So that's what I did. And I'll, I'll show you what I did there. I'm back in Retina in Gray 3, and I just have the same project open here, so there's, um, there hasn't been any change. But what I can do is create individual material values for each of these settings for all of the materials I have. Now, it'll make a pretty long list, but it's useful just to do a quick select. So all of these values are for vector, so I'll select the, the vector uh, setting, and I'll load this material file. I, again, I'll upload this to my, uh, my GitHub repository and you can download it, but you have to note that these are starting points for things. They're not gonna be the final values that are, you can use necessarily on your laser. Uh, I have a 45 watt laser, for example, and those values will differ for a 40 watt laser for sure, but I suspect from one, just one laser to the next, they're also going to, to uh, change. So I can hit okay here. And now I should be able to use those settings for, for anything. So, uh, you know, we can go select, we can change this material to something else. So if I wanted to change it to Baltic Birch, I could say, just select that value and you'll see it changed. And I can do that for all of these. Uh, this is the 15% and so on down the list. And uh, again, for the text, I would typically use the 50% value so I can cheat and I can pick it just from here and you'll see it changed. So you could say if I wanted to laser cut the same part, but in a different material, you could just quickly run down this list and change the values for all of these settings to, to values that make more sense for the material, material you're using. And again, you won't necessarily use all, uh, I think there's 18 of them here. So you pick the ones you want and, and uh, you can skip the rest. But there you go, that's, so now I have, you know, what amounts to a very long list of materials, but it still lets me uh, very quickly select you know, if I wanted to change this to cardboard, for example, it's a very quick selection to to make that switch for any given uh, kind of intensity that I want to draw or grayscale with a vector. Uh, again, rasters are a little bit different, and I can look, maybe we can do uh, something similar for rasters just to see uh, how to get the sets, the settings for rasters proper as well. But uh, for this video, we're focused solely on vectors. Uh, and there you go. You can, you should be able to upload this. Feel free to add more if you change, have different materials. I have uh, cork as well, which is also here, uh, acrylic that I cut quite often. Uh, I didn't put those settings in here, but I'll put them in before I make this, this material list available. Uh, acrylic especially is, is a bit of a strange kind of material because there's very minimal gradient change from, from one value to the next. So it, it isn't really something you're going to, going to want to use for, uh, for anything that looks like a grayscale of some sort. But it's good to have the, the calibration there just so you can see it. And you, it may help you make a choice for, for some material or, or some component that you're working on. So I now have a pretty impressive collection of materials and I can quickly look and see if a material will print in the shades that I, I care about. Uh, and if it does, I can just quickly grab my material settings from my material list that I've carefully created and I can have settings up and running. And usually uh, I'm good to laser cut something or laser engrave something um, the first time. And uh, 
uh, no more wasting material or, uh, you know, just wasting time, honestly. So uh, that's especially important if you're working on paying jobs where, you know, wasted material costs money and so does time. So, uh, so it was important for me. Uh, and now that you know a bit more about these material settings, uh, I'll link you to a video up here uh, that I did previously around the three modes of operation that you can work on in, with your laser, namely cutting, etching, and engraving. Here we're specifically talking about the etching piece, although if you look at uh, the Muse site, they refer to uh, vector uh, etching, you know, color gradients in in with vectors, they refer to that as engraving. And I think personally that's wrong. Engraving to me is, is uh, more uh, the grayscale, uh, like a photo kind of operation. So, but each to his own, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the other thing I can link to is if you're still looking for a laser uh, and you're comparing, uh, I can also link up on this side, I guess, uh, some uh, information on why I chose a Muse 3D over a Glowforge, for example. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a Glowforge for 99% of uh, people's use cases, but for my particular use cases, a Muse was the right way to go. So uh, anyway, you can feel free to watch those videos. And with that, we'll close down and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.